good luck. All right, so this marks week 89 of the Shogi Teaching Ladder. Um, in general, I tend to play against, or I tend to play third foul rook and central foul rook. Um, so yeah, I wish my opponent good luck at the beginning of the game, as is standard or custom. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the idea of the teaching layer is to play a higher rated opponent and a lower rated opponent, and everybody gets to analyze the games afterward and learn something from them. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the details of this opening. Hmm. I am not remembering. So I'm going to play fourth foul, Rook. This way I can defend both points of a bishop drop. Yeah, this third foul Rook is quite fun. This actually closes the diagonal, and I'm not a fan of doing that this early in the game. Um, hmm. Interesting. So in Shogi, there's multiple game phases. The first phase is uh, the opening, and an object of the opening is to activate your pieces um, without hanging them. So I see they want to push this pawn. If I take, Rook takes, would be forking this and attacking this direction. Um, hmm. I'm going to start expanding the scope of my Rook here. This is defended by both my Rook and my Bishop. My immediate concern is what if they expose their Bishop this way? I'm trying to work that out, even though I just played this. Um, well, no, this double attack on this point is more effective when I don't have two pieces defending the same point. Here it's fine. But yeah, if you've played third file or central file rook or some other file rook, um, then this rook sacrifice for the pawn and the bishop takes, bishop takes, uh, exchanging a rook for a bishop, rather, is playable and kind of fun. Okay. Um, I don't know what shape my opponent is playing. Hmm. I have half a mind to bring my silver up the board, but that takes three turns to complete. I want to castle, but man, seeing this, this tower, I have, I wish I had an attack ready to just smash the tower apart. It'd be so powerful, but um, I don't have that. And my king is not so safe here. The advancing gold suggests that they're not going to advance all their silvers forward. So I'm not fearing a heavy attack in the opening. <sighs> Normally I would just love to push this pawn forward. Um, and maybe even do a similar rook for bishop exchange as I was talking about just a second ago. Um, but with me doing the exchange. This is confusing. They've not built any castle shape that I recognize. I really want to attack it quickly. I've been doing that so much in these teaching ladder games. It's very quick attacks, but here it might actually be justified. But where's my rook going to go afterward? I don't know. I'm not convinced my attack's a good idea. So, it's not in the spirit of a fourth foul rook attack to do that anyway. I'm going to push on this edge in case they castle to the left. I'll make it very uncomfortable for them to castle this direction. Hmm. 
The downside of doing this is that, yeah, they could bring their rook out and start attacking the left side of the board. Uh, but I've not yet made any obvious weaknesses. This pawn might be a target. Um, I don't know how they are going to sustain it. Again, normally I would build a castle, but it seems like that's not the sort of shogi we're playing today. Hmm. Expanding the scope of my rook can't be terrible, but... I was hoping to play a calmer game. That's seemingly not in the cards. Why don't I bring the silver forward? If I do that, they'll do the same. It'll be a nice calm game. I won't get to exchange bishops like I'm aiming to do, but a bishop exchange with this gold here doesn't favor me anyway. So yeah, let's just attack this pawn. They have successfully talked me out of opening my own bishop diagonal. My bishop's going to have to find uh, somewhere else to go. Um, I forgot. My other plan was to just push this pawn a second time. Somewhat similar to Fuji's system, but not really. Um, they might not even castle this direction anyway. So, now I'm blocking my rook, but I'm able to attack this pawn next. If I immediately attack it, their gold will not be able to cover this point in time. So, only the rook could defend this point. I guess the rook defending this point would actually be decent for them. I don't know why. I thought this would be good for me. I guess if the rook shifts over, I can't exactly play my silver to 5-5, five five, can I? Because the bishop already covers 5-5. Five five. Hmm. So yeah, my shape is super clumsy here. Um, so if I bring the silver out and if they move the rook over, now if I bring my king to the right, is it safer somehow than it was a minute ago? I'm not so sure. If I move the king immediately and they push and I take and rook takes and pawn drop and the rook goes back, then I chase this. Am I doing okay? Maybe. Um. Yeah, do I move the king or do I move the silver? The silver is blocking my rook. Hmm, I have an idea. So if the rook defends this pawn, and it will, then if they try something tricky here, I too have something a little bit tricky in return. So we're going to get the king out of this attack. And if they immediately push, uh, then I'm able to build... I'm able to surround their rook and then bring my silver up and collect it. So 
so they can't immediately push on my castle. Um, hmm, strange. They've not pushed this here, but it doesn't matter, does it? Since this knight is still protecting this point, I don't have a pin. If bishops get exchanged, I can't just win the rook. Um, Oh, is this preparing to bring a knight forward to stop me from pushing this? Because I could intercept that. We could have a fun little adventure. Now, why am I trying to intercept that, though? Like, if I just get any pawn in hand, I can easily harass such a knight. Um... Let's defend my center. And if they bring the knight out, I'm cool with that. I'm not scared of a knight. This might prepare for me to just switch my rook back to the third file and try to pick up the knight, right? There's nothing saying I'm forced to commit to fourth file here. If they're just hell-bent on preventing such an attack, I can switch back and play third fall rook. Yeah, I don't see any problem with pursuing the knight's head the more and more I look at it. The only problem I see is if they push this pawn twice, um, I don't know that I can immediately deal with that. Rook over, pawn up, pawn up, pawn up. What if I do pawn up first and then bring the rook over? I don't see a problem. Now you might say, like, wait, the rook's not lined up with the pawn. Why are you pushing this pawn? I think I explained my reasoning. They can't immediately defend this. And they haven't really built a castle, so I want to attack even though I'm playing as Gota. So I attack. Now, I've not made up my mind on this, but taking the pawn is an option. I've not made up my mind. Like, they do have rook drops if I take that. There are consequences. Um, I'm finding it difficult to take those consequences seriously. Because their castle really isn't lined up to deal with a rook drop. I can drop the rook here, and it can... No, it can't take this pawn. It can only take here, or retreat. Meanwhile, they do have rook drops, too. So, yeah, it's not so simple. I wish it were simple. That'd be so nice. But my bishop's blocked. This is not the time for me to pick an attack. Um... Because they drop a rook here. And I just don't have a crushing counterattack to that, despite their king being clearly in the center of the board. Hmm. 
Yeah, I guess I'll retreat. So they've built up uh, this castle. And I've got an active rook. Their rook is slightly less active. That's fine. They're still threatening to push this pawn to 5-5, five five, and I don't yet have an answer to that. That's less fine. I think I have an answer now. Wait, you're concerned that I'm going to move the knight up this way? Really? <clears throat> yeah, no, since I'm threatening to push this pawn and all hell break loose, you might consider getting the king out of there. Yeah, that's reasonable. And now I might take some more time to build up my castle, since I have one move to do so. I might consider that. Yeah, let's get my king away from here if I can. This is slow. That's a lost move if you play that. It does stop my knight from moving, but it's slow. Um, hmm. Okay. You talked me into it. Who am I to say no? This wasn't my plan A, but it is a plan. So if the bishop moves, then I can spend time pushing this pawn and exchanging bishops. My king is a bit safer than it used to be. They've been committing to attacking the front of my castle. Oh, I forgot I had this hanging the entire time. Looks like I didn't have to move the pawn. Uh, interesting. That's surprising. I forgot I had this hanging. But also, now their bishop is loose. Um, I haven't completed Anaguma just yet. And they're going to take bishops, or are going to exchange bishops when I do complete the castle anyway. So why should I bother completing it? Hmm. Yeah, my castle will be more secure if I do this. I'll spend a tempo on that. Now, since the rook is pointing down this file, it might not be worth the tempo to bring over the other gold onto the same file as the rook. That might be a lost tempo. 
Um, so, yeah, let's try this. I'm playing quicker since I'm about to enter Bioyomi. Oh, they can take here, and a pawn that takes can actually capture forwards, can't it? We both missed tactics this game. We both missed some tactics. Yeah, they should take my knight and then take, like, after the bishop exchange. There's no reason for them to give me the knight. I am embarrassed. It's okay. So I can fork their king and rook. Uh, that was my thought in case they attack my rook from this close range. If my rook runs away, then I can exchange, and I'll have a rook that can attack across their back rank. Though they'll have a horse that could defend quite well. This is not super clear, but also like if they drop here, I could move the rook to the side or back. I don't have to give up the lance. I admit I haven't read everything, but um, their attack is a bit slow here. It's pawn drop, one of their golds takes it. Yeah, my attack is slow too. Um, hmm. uh, I could wish my attack were faster, but that won't change anything. That's just wishing. Okay, we're going to attack on the line where the king is at. If bishop drops here, I can retreat. If the bishop drops somewhere else, hopefully I won't die too badly. Um, okay, so I retreat away from this bishop's attack. Thankfully, I've not lost my rook. And my next idea is to try to ex uh, develop my rook somehow here. I have a pawn in hand, and it would be nice to use the pawn in hand to lure the silver out and then do this fork. That's probably not going to happen. Or rather, if it does happen, they retreat the silver, I take the rook, and then I drop the rook back here, and it's probably not fatal but it gives them things to think about. Um, where could the knight drop? I guess here, and then it would be attacking my rook next, wouldn't it? Hmm. I might be giving a rook for a knight. Maybe not, though. So I can attack the bishop. The bishop promotes. I take the knight, they take a lance. Um, I wonder. If I drop a pawn... Knight promotes, I take, they take. It's more active for me to save this. Uh, 
これより秒読みに入りますうん。Yeah, my most active move is to move the rook over attack the, the both of these. They promote the bishop. I take the knight, they take the lance. I do this fork. We might exchange. No, the fork is not the most. Yeah, I should continue and attack here after taking here. I'm fine. I've not dropped anything. If I attack, they retreat. I take, they take. I promote or advance. All right. So, yeah, the bishop moves, I take the knight, they take my lance, and then I push on the king's head again, threatening again this pawn drop, um, which would have this fork tied to it. I'm concerned a little bit, two things. One, that they might attack on my edge, and that might kill me. Two, well, I guess this silver head could be weak, uh, but I don't have time to bring my gold over to defend things. Since, yeah, I want to attack this castle. This is, it's good at dealing attack with attacks from the front, but not from a rook from behind. All right. Pieces promote when they retreat. Damn. I forgot about that. I still have night drop to hit this. If it moves, this lo uh, becomes loose. I also have a bishop drop, forking horse, and lance. Sanjuvio. Bishop drop might be the best way. To, well, I don't know. Mm -mm. Yeah, their bishop, their horse is in a weird spot. I think this is the best way I can activate all of my pieces. This strongly encourages an exchange, but doesn't force it. But yeah, if I just simply drop the knight and try to attack directly, um, my rook is not activating in that line. Here, they could bring the horse forward, and uh, at the cost of not getting my lance and giving up this lance, they could suppress my rook at least for some time. So I take here, bishop drop, I take again, or they promote here, and then I do this knight drop, pawn drop thing, and this comes loose. So, yeah, I think I'm doing okay. Hmm. There is a tactic here. Bishop drop back here hits my gold. Oh, but then I tra- well, no, that doesn't trap because the knight has that covered. Oh, they can protect the knight. Opening their castle. I did not expect that. OK. 
Okay. Well, I guess I'm going with my direct attack now. So you can chase my pieces, but I can chase your king. These pawns in this wedge uh, prevent my knight from attacking effectively, so I have to resort to this. I mean, maybe there was a trick with bishop drop here instead, and I just missed it. Maybe. That might be the truth of this. <laughs> Actually, I might have bishop 5-5 five five here or something if they attack my rook directly. Um, but I was thinking if they attack directly, I just move out of the way. Let them collect my lance. Um, taking the knight looks even stronger now, though. Yeah, if I take the knight, how is my attack running out? Hmm. It might be. Could be running out. I don't know. All right, so I step aside. Uh, they get my lance. I can't. No, you have to move the bishop, dude. I'm sorry. I probably have quite an initiative here. Uh, if they get greedy. Maybe if they just try to defend this, it'll be okay, but if they get materialistic, it's difficult for them. I almost took the knight. But no, the bishop covers the knight drop square, so I can't do... Well, I might have been able to do it. I might have just whipped out an amazing opportunity that will never happen again, but... I don't know. My knight attacking here is kind of fun. Knight takes silver drop back here. Lance drop, pawn drop. Yeah, I think I've barely got things covered. I'm needing to create a weakness, and it's not easy. 
All right, so I intend to drop something on 7-7, seven, seven, or rather 3-3. Three, three. Um, I think it has to be a silver, because then if they chase my rook, I can take the knight. And if they take the rook directly, that's one thing. Oh, but no, if they just take my silver, hmm, that's a problem. But then I have a place to drop my knight. It's both golds. But my rook is hanging. Hmm. This is the first move I saw. And somehow I'm just super convinced that it's a good idea. Which probably means it's terrible, but I just can't stop looking at it. Um, I looked like a bishop drop back here, and that doesn't go anywhere. Tried to find some other ideas. None of those really seem to go anywhere. So this is what I came up with. But... I don't know that it's, it looks terrible in retrospect, but this horse on the edge is also bad. My attack is fast until they do something. Mm. I was thinking they... Oh, they can't detect the rook directly. Never mind. Um, I really want this knight. Oh my goodness, I want this knight. Oh, man. The only question is, do I want both knights? Sanjubyo. I do want both knights. I don't know why, but two knights are better than one. Now, taking the lance that supports an attack against my king is probably of some importance. So this fork... How can I say no to this fork? I don't know that I can. Yeah, we're doing the fork. Finally, I found a place to activate my bishop, and I'm convinced that this is worth it. I mean, yeah, this shuts down my other attacks, and that's disappointing. I get that, but... Um, there will be new attacks. It'll be okay. Sanjubyo.
40秒Hmm, this prevents a night drop. Hmm, I should be more disappointed than I am about that. Hmm. But now this looked so amazing. Taking here, taking here, threatening to capture back this way, but also threatening to take the silver and hit the rook. This is a monster of a piece we've released. I am aware I have a very pro rook bias. And rooks are amazing pieces, but I might have in this case to exchange it for a bishop. I don't have a choice. I have picked off their lance. Oh, I walked right into a fork, by the way. That's not good. Um, I was so obsessed over my attacking possibilities that... Wait, no. They can't fork me because this is a horse. If this were some other piece, they'd be able to pull off a fork effectively, but... I don't know that a rook can fork a horse and a gold at such close range. I am still threatening night drop and then night drops so that would force their gold to move up this way. Um, I should probably take the horse, but then what? Horse takes gold or silver drop. Horse moves somewhere. And try not to get mated. <laughs> um, I'm trying to create a snipe drop. I'm trying to figure out where my lance and knights are going to go. It's not easy. Oh, I'll have a bishop too. Bishop would be nice. Hmm. Curious. 
curious. Uh, that's just a mistake. I should take this and then drop a knight here. Like, unless somehow I've blundered something, this seems to be a mistake. How could I have blundered something here? I mean, my gold's loose. I'll give you that. You don't have a bishop. So where's the discovered attack threat or something here? I don't understand. Uh, this prepares to give them the ability to drop a pawn back next to their king. And defend against some of my attacks. Um, I could take it. It is a token. I could attack the silver directly. I'm annoyed that I can't find a better move than that. This token would eventually... Um, Prove dangerous. Um. Hmm. Wait a second. What's this? This is bizarre. Okay, we are going to attack the silver. The silver is preventing me from forking two gold generals. Yeah, this asks for them to attack my horse directly, because if they don't, um, tactics result in me collecting this. Even if they do, I might still get the rook out of this steal. Now they're attacking my gold. That's fine. Um, I've got tactics on my side, I think. Okay, I'm going to attack your king. Oh, maybe even more compelling than I intended. I was going to drop a bishop at 5-5. Five five. That might not be my best move here. I have another knight drop. I just collect another gold general, or another general. This one's gold. But bishop 5-5 looks powerful, too. 
Bishop f5 takes, takes, bishop drop, bishop takes, king takes, bishop drop, bishop drop, bishop takes, king takes. I'm out of bishop drops. But if I throw in a knight drop first, uh, they take my gold, I take their gold. And I'm very close to their king. Yeah, we're going to attack in this really straightforward fashion. Silver takes seems forced, but also does not completely stop my attack. I don't know that there is a way to completely stop my attack at this point. I take, Rook takes. Uh, I was considering Lance drop. Let me have a Lance all the way up here. Um, Yeah, this looks fun, right? I think they're intending uh, to take my pawn. I think that's fine. Do I care if they have some rook or dragon or something stranded on the edge of the board? Is that something I should care about? Um, I could drop a bishop. They don't have a general to drop against it. Sanjubio. I could use a rook. Rooks are fun pieces. Just because it promotes doesn't mean it's safe. Because you have another piece hanging. Also, because I guess... This rook actually is trapped back here. Incredibly. It seems surreal, because you'd never think about a dragon being trapped. But uh, that seems to happen here. Sanjubio 
40秒Again, this is pretty surreal to see this kind of a trap occur. Sure, both of my silvers will be offside if we exchange uh, the horse and dragon, but uh, I'll have an attack. An attack's worth something. Now, if I drag this back one, then what? Night drop? Yeah, I lose the tempo. Um, I can't bully this forever. Hmm, maybe it's okay. Yeah, this looks kind of fun. Let's try it. Looks kind of insane, but it looks kind of fun. So my next idea is to collect this gold here as they collect my gold and lance. I think it's fine. Actually, they can't take my gold. What am I talking about? But I can attack their gold. Um... Yeah, that looks kind of fun. Let's try that. And now we'll start to discover all the tactics that I've been missing, I guess. I mean, sure, they can try to pin this. But I'm curious about chasing their king. Or killing it, rather. Capturing the king is the goal. Even if the path to get there is a bit strange. That's yeah, so they're attacking my silver. Um, I think this is where I drop the other bishop. Shogi is complicated. So I am attacking their dragon. They can interpose. Um, and then I could take this gold. Or I could take here, which is the base supporting this gold. Or Anyway, if I take here, I'm forking a silver and a gold. Lots of stuff is going on here. Uh, if they take my pieces, I've got them defended at the moment. They can't... Yeah. This does fork pieces I have. As they step out of that fork. Um, however, I can still take this. Um... What else?
Taking this attacks the silver, as I pointed out. I don't think there's any optimal move order. I'm, I've tried a lot reasoning about all of it. I've given up a lot of material. It's going to hurt a lot, but um, it's fine. This gives them another piece where I've just taken a pawn. So I could exchange a horse for a gold if I wanted to. Would I ever want to? I don't think so. I could get two pieces for my horse and threaten a knight. It's playable. Um, yeah, I think this is best. So I've prevented their king from running up the board. I have five pawns and I'm attacking this. Meanwhile, I don't know. This is complicated. I guess, yeah, they can fork my gold and silver this way. I missed that. No, but I can take it. Um if I want to. Hmm. Oh, this. This doesn't hit my silver. I'm confused. Sanjudiop that's my plan A. It gives me something to snipe at with this horse. Plan B was drop it here instead. C was take the silver. A rip could actually be useful here, couldn't it?
I'm trying to protect my king. Yeah, this lance drop sucked. I should not have done that. I'm somewhat amused that my opponent finds this position at least as confusing as I do. Oh, I could drop a pawn down here. What the fuck am I thinking? I should have done that. Um, Still can and should do this, but... <sighs> what a complicated position. Sanjubyo. Yeah, I need to stop both rooks before I get mated. The downside of this is that it kills my attack. It really does. But I'm playing as Anaguma. I don't need to rush my attack. I should definitely be patient. <sighs> Patience is difficult. So this encourages... Well, I'm sorry. The gold's defended. I keep imagining that it's hanging, and it's just not hanging. Um... That's weird. It does block the diagonal to the king. So a minute ago, I was saying how great it would be to have a rook. I'm not sure if I meant it, but if I do mean it, I should do something about that. But the rooks are so sad here. I can't. The rooks are so, so, so depressed in this position. In most positions, I'd be eager to do this fork, but here I'm just not. Sanjubio
I mean, a knight's a good piece, too. Here, a knight could be quite useful. I don't know. I'm somewhat annoyed with myself for how I just played that. My lance was sad. It needs a brighter future. Uh, I missed... Their point isn't to take my lance. It's to force my gold to move. Fair enough. Pawn drop, pawn advance looks reasonable. I just promote the lance and bring it over. Um, Thirty-five. Sucks. I'm not reading everything, or I'm not reading very well at all, honestly. I was so excited to see this concept of a bottom pawn appear in my game that I just, I don't know. Made things easy for the opponent. Oh, that's clever. Well, interesting. Okay, my horse returns to your king. Show me your plan. Yeah, so against this, I'd consider it another pawn drop. That was my thought. Um, it's not a good thought. Where is it? That looks playable.
Oh, that's right. Pawn promotes eventually breaks my castle. Not this instant, but eventually my castle is destroyed, so... Um... Hmm. Well, I could take that, right? Is there something so wrong with taking it? I think I have to try taking it. It's sad, for sure. Um... I think I have to try taking it, though. So we're going to pursue the king this way. The idea is we promote this lance and it joins in the attack. That our silver and two horses somehow give us enough power. Sorry, that doesn't work, my friend. It's a reasonable defensive try. Um... Somehow I read this out as being a checkmate, and it's, it's not a checkmate. I got way too cocky. I need to actually read things instead of pretending to read them. Sanjubyo. <sighs> I forgot the gold defense this point. Thirty 
40秒So the dragon is defending this knight, and the knight's supporting this attack on the gold. Um, so I need the dragon to move away so I can take this knight and survive their attack. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Um, yeah, I don't see a checkmate on them. So I'm admitting that I misread this. Now, I could take this knight, or this knight really, either. Um, if I take, if they take, if I drop a knight here, yeah, that's forceful. If I drop a knight here, gold takes knight. That's a problem. I'm gonna take here anyway. Um understanding that it's going to be a long game, or hoping that it's going to be a long game. Yeah, they moved their knight out of threat. Um, that brings some severe attack with it. Oh, it gives them a gold general, too. Damn. Yeah, that's good. That's a good attacking move. My knight is not a good attacking piece. Sanjubio. Two knights here are not great. Jeez, that's strong. Their king might be escaping my attack. The place might be with will be and yeah. Damn. Um No. A knight doesn't even checkmate them here. Oh, two knights do, mate. Never mind. Knight drop, they have to take, I take. Dragon takes and sucks. I don't see anything better. I'm going to go with this.
All right, so I've awarded them this Tower of Pieces. Um, what can I do? <laughs> what can I do now? I can hit that. Sad. But this supports me bringing another knight back. Oh, right. They can fork my bishop and my attack. That's right. Um... I could take the silver if they do that, but that's small consolation. That might not be the correct square. Oh, my horse is not defended. I have no choice here. I don't know about this one. This one looks weird. A bishop is kind of useless in this, isn't it?
50秒I couldn't make up my mind there. Could not make up my mind. I misread that like five times. Every time I misread that. Not once did I read that correctly. All right. Well, that's good to know. There were moves I could have played, and I forgot what they were. So I played the bad move. All right, there goes my dragon. We'll survive this. Eventually. Sanjubio. <sighs> This was the other thing I was trying to read out, is if bishop takes, can I do silver takes to avoid all kinds of nonsense here? Um, yeah, actually it's legal, but it doesn't avoid anything, does it? If my silver moves out, they just drop closer to my castle. Mercifully, they backed out, but yeah, this is not going to end well at all. Um,
It's a dumb move, but I'm just not thinking right now. Maybe there's some benefit to it, but that's just me giving up a pawn to get more thinking time. Okay, that's another desperate move. But spending a tempo to promote my bishop isn't worth it here. So... I need to try something more desperate. If the gold retreats, I can use a pawn to attack it. It can retreat again, and then I have no plan. But I'll have something. I'll have a pawn next to the castle. As I guess I take a pawn and try to build something up. Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, that thing about not thinking clearly continues to strike home. All right. Um, that's disappointing. Sanjudio. Alright, that's something. Oh, yeah, they have a horse that can defend against that, don't they? But is that how they want to defend against this? Maybe. Probably. Um, no, if I just drop it, they take it. No, they can't take it. They shouldn't take this. Yeah. Just continue building a more solid shape. Okay. Uh, what do we do now? Having jettisoned almost all of my pieces, what can I do? Sanjudio. Not much. Can get a pawn in hand. I 
I already had one pawn in hand. Why do I need a second pawn in hand? I don't know. Um, we'll find out. We'll find some purpose to this. Oh, yeah, I could be preparing an escape route for my king. Given how completely under this is going. Yeah. Escape should be on the mind at this point. It's hopeless, but um, probably the best idea. Ah, that's a good move. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's checkmate. I don't have any tricks here. Yeah, thanks for the game. Right. Uh, so the idea after a teaching lighter game is that you and the opponent get to review the game together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess uh, traditionally we review from the beginning. So I guess that's the the idea of how we're going to review this. As long as there's time, and I assume there is. But oh, sure. That's fine. Yeah, I'll do my own analysis uh, here. We could analyze some other time as well, but for purposes of this video, I'll perform some analysis. Uh, so, um, yeah, I get that it is quite late given our time zone difference. So, uh, and the game ran a bit longer than we expected. Although he did find uh, he she at the very end. Uh, but yeah, we'll uh, have to. Do analysis some other time, but I'm still going to do my own analysis here if that's fine. Yeah, that makes two of us transport. <laughs> that makes two of us. Uh, I don't really know what happened. I guess that's why we have to do analysis, but um, yeah, the game ran much longer than most games run. Yeah. Time zones make these sorts of things challenging. If you were playing in person, there'd be some expect. Oh, chat continues. Yeah, thanks for the game. It's been good fun. Um, so if we were doing the analysis in person, or the game in person, we expect to do an analysis thereafter. I'm going to do an analysis here anyway. Uh, so normally we're most excited about the end game, and that's what occupies our first thoughts, but if you actually read the guide on 81 Dojo, it recommends how to perform an analysis to improve at Shogi. Uh, that guide suggests start with the opening, because otherwise you're going to spend most of your time at the end of the game and not have chance to actually properly analyze the full game. There were a lot of complications at this point, and I was looking forward to hearing what my opponent was thinking about this sort of thing. Uh, whether they are going to push uh, this pawn or this pawn, what castle they intended to build, and so forth. But um, so we'll hear from them at some point. Um, I can't really invent that for them, and you saw during the game how confused I was by that. Here I was proud of switching to third file and activating my rook. I seriously considered this, but reasoned that this is actually not so easy to deal with, and I don't have a good rook drop. Because they've built this interesting shape that somehow defends against rook drops. I mean, sure, I've got this attack idea. Sure, I could like put a rook somewhere, but it 
it's not really so effective. So yeah, this I shied away from doing. They talked me out of it in a way, but I have a pawn in hand. It allows me to pawn drop and repeat this tactic some other time, and I guess in the future I've... Well, no, I moved my knight out. Trying to take advantage of them not having built a castle yet. Uh, so then I build Anaguma Castle, which uh, a year or so ago, I used to play this a lot. Now, well, I used to play it for a couple months or a month or something like that, and got confused and tired of um, being confused about it. So I normally don't build this castle. I normally build things uh, that are quicker to build and allow me to attack faster. But my opponent um, was really slow with how they approached my position. During the game, I commented on a number of things that I probably missed around here, but I did manage to collect the lance. Um, I offered uh, this exchange and I said during the game that they were forced to take this. That might not be true. They might be able to just walk back and, you know, uh, be able to protect their king. A horse around the king is worth about three generals, they say. So that might actually be a really good defense. Um, regardless, this is the path we went down. Uh, yeah, they attacked my dragon. And from here, this... I should have been able to win this somehow. Um, one thing I considered was the slants drop. And I was concerned about this, and probably shouldn't have been so concerned. Um, what was the next... oh, then they take here. But then I take the rook, never mind. Yeah, I don't know. I just, like, completely blanked from, like, move 83 to the end of the game. A lot of things did not go well. Um, I played this lance drop, and then I didn't play the continuation of just promoting this here. And had I just played this, at least I would have had some pieces moving in on the castle. Sure, I don't have a rook. Sure, they could promote this. I could block that. They could move around my block. I could try again to block it. Um, it would have been interesting. This might have been a better plan, even though they have a lot of things on the piece stand, and I was concerned about that. They don't have an attack. And here I have an attack. It's just not a great one, but it's an attack. I'm concerned also that like if this gold moves, maybe their king escapes. So, but I have three pieces on my piece stand. I should be able to do something. Uh, instead, I get all excited about trapping this dragon, but then let it out because uh, I'm a nice guy. But also, I thought this is a great way for me to build an attack quickly, and then I wussed out. Like I could have taken here. They take here. I take. I give a horse and a gold for this attack. I could not find a way for this attack to actually checkmate. And again, the concern that like somehow their king would escape and they have this immense pile of pieces, that concerned me. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I'm worse in this position, but I don't know. I don't play this castle often. This looks somewhat resilient, but I'm not sure exactly how solid Anaguma is. So I whisked out and played my bishop. Um, anyway, eventually, through all of our tactics, um, yeah, I approached their king, I did this, I did this, and I expect that here they probably just have to like step away attack this while attacking that, and maybe I have an attack, but probably not. This, taking this pawn, uh, I don't know. Like I said, since move 83, I've not been thinking clearly. I'm not familiar with this shape, and I'm more accustomed to seeing it attacked from the front than from the side, so I was really caught off guard. Um, I'll pass this through an engine afterwards to see like what variations were missed. 
And my big plan here was horse ticks, and I completely missed this. And my attack is dead. So, yeah, I this is more solid than it looks. I don't know what to do. Maybe I should take this here, uh, even though I'm under severe attack. Maybe not. Um, but I've been building up to that whole threat. I just forgot that this gold on 3-7 is really resilient, and furthermore, I can't kick it because there's another gold supporting it right here. So we have this tower of all these pieces that are actually kind of solid. And again, I'm not sure the timing of this castle, how much time I have before uh, I get mated. So yeah, I don't play this shape often. Uh, and they are attacking from a direction I usually don't see attacking this castle. So yeah, I just had no sense of what was going on here. I saw that if I play this, uh, they take... I can exchange my Rook for the Dragon. But this doesn't look good at all, right? Um, maybe it's better than it looks. Because, I don't know. What do they do here? Maybe they do this? Um... It's a shame if I don't have a mate here. Because it looks like I'm getting mated. Um, oh wait, no, I take this. Yeah, I survive. And now that I survived, things, although painful, might be just fine. Um... Yeah, they don't have a way to strengthen this attack further. It's... yeah. This shuts down their attack with the pawn and the horse. Um, I mean, sure, they can take here, but they don't have another knight to drop to hit this with tempo. So, yeah, it's, they don't have a way to continue the attack if I just stopped it here. If I just made my castle even more solid, then this rook exchange would have been okay. It's unnecessary, I'm sure. Like, Anaguma's supposed to be a really strong shape. Um, so, I shouldn't be terrified about facing this. Uh, but my horse is off sides. My other horse is kind of in a weird spot. They built up a curious attack here, and my attack just doesn't lead anywhere. This pawn 5-5 five five completely shuts down. Oh my good. Well, no, they're dragon. Yeah. It's... I got greedy. I should have taken this one. Had I taken this... Okay, my horse is hanging. Um... But, what about this? I don't know. I don't know. Let's say they do some ridiculous move. Let's say, this is never going to happen. Oh, you can't do that. Never mind. Let's say, my, mouth, my hand slipped. What if they do this? No reasonable person would ever do that. Or, I don't know. Say they push this. Now can I take here? How does this work? So let's say we have this, which is what I was trying to aim for earlier. The king still escapes, right? This doesn't actually checkmate, because there's too many defensive pieces. Um, yeah, now this doesn't mate. So, uh, what if I take this one? Uh, then I guess if they take there, this is actually checkmating. So they'd have to, if they do this, um, mm, <laughs> I don't know. And this, king up, king up, the king escapes. So... That's no good either. Yeah, I don't know. 
so just I made numerous errors in judgment throughout uh, the middle game and end game, and was duly punished for them. Like here, this gold drop was a panic move, but I'm probably lost at this point. The move I could have considered was this drop, trying to get this exchange. Uh, but the problem with this is they just move away from that. And that's not an exchange. That's just me giving up another piece. So, yeah, not totally sure what happened. A lot of things happened this game. Um, I did not manage my time well because I got arrogant. Somewhere around, where was it? Somewhere around this point, I relaxed and I got punished. And that's what happens when you relax. Yes, it's been a very intense game. Yes, at this point, I finally got the Rook. Things should be uh, trending upward from here. But you can't just let things completely go. This was a slack move. This would have been fine. This is a fork. I just drop this, assume between all the threats I was making that I had something, and I just don't. And that's why you have to be careful. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting game. Uh, thanks to my opponent, and congratulations on this uh, victory and a game that confused both of us and presented us a lot of practical challenges. Um, yeah, I did get lucky in winning the dragon. Uh, so, yeah, it's a fair game. It's anyone's game. And I'm uh, glad we played it.